Hello everyone. So now I'm going to start uh, working with the monitor. And well, it's it's a very bad shape, as you can see, like a lot of uh, marks. Doesn't look like scuffs or any sort, but yeah, it's going to give me like a lot of uh, work to do. So just uh, to give you like, uh, let me just give some close up here, so you get actually to see the state of the monitor. So, just like the rest, it is pretty filthy, as you can see, right? So I have to remove this thing on the top here, which will leave like a big mark for sure. So, yeah, it is like in a very bad shape, as you can see, like lots and lots of marks. Yep. So more here and here. All right, there is a lot. So the good thing is that the screen itself it's in very good shape. Other than being filthy, it is actually in good shape. So uh, the quality of the image, I mean. So let's start uh, the cleaning of this. I will basically use a brush to clean everything here and I will then disassemble the whole thing to sorry about that I will then disassemble the whole thing you know for um, a more deep in-depth in cleaning of this whole thing so I have here my brush and I will basically now start with the cleaning process so Basically, well, what I do is uh, get rid of all the dust. As you can see, I'm not, not sure if the video is actually picking this, but it's really a lot of dust that is coming off. So, just uh, out of curiosity, you might have noticed that when I performed the cleaning and the retro brighting and everything on the uh, the Power Mac 6100 on the previous video, that I that was all I've done. Like I didn't actually uh, replace any caps or did anything way too technical. It was mainly like a cleaning job. And uh, you know a retro biting thing, and that was pretty much it. And the reason being, it is fully functional. Like uh, I tested it, it is putting up, it is working as expected. And uh, you know, like even though good practice tells me that yeah, you should replace the caps on those old machines, I am more like to the idea that if something is not broken, like uh, I'm not gonna touch it unless there is a good reason for it and I have done a lot of those in the past like replacing caps even on notebooks and uh, yeah it's a lot of work sometimes you really need to and sometimes you don't that's really how it goes and I don't think this machine actually needs it so at least not now maybe in the future if something starts to be misbehaving then I might but uh, yeah not to worry about this right now. So yeah, it's uh, a lot of dust. It's basically dust, which is good. Like it is yellowed, but again, we have the retro writing thing that we can do. So, and uh, as you can see, we do have some sun. So I have to basically be fast here to take opportunity on the sun. Uh, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to actually remove the tube from the frame here. If it is way too hard, I'm actually going to retrobite this uh, with the tube on it. I'm just going to mask it out and, you know, it, uh, it, it works well. So, okay, so the next step is removing this thing here. So I'm just going uh, to get a knife and uh, get this done. 
So sorry about the noise because I'm outside and someone is uh, doing some gardening thing. So normally you should not use a knife in plastic as I have said before, but in this case here, like uh, there is really not much I can do. Like this is really, really like, uh, let me see if I can force it here. And again, like I'm always afraid to break the plastic of the monitor and that's never good. I could use a heat gun as well, you know, to melt the adhesive, the adhesive here. But um, again, like using a melting gun, um, heating gun could also damage the plastic. And uh, again, those plastics are so fragile. Yeah, that is going to be tricky, you know, to remove like... Um, A lot of uh, effort. It needs to be put in here. Yeah, this is not going to be easy, and uh, it's probably going to leave some marks. Imagine this was going to be so hard. I don't know. Uh, if I really force it, you know, like uh, chances are, I have to remove it for the retrobiting because there is going to be a big mark here for sure, like a very uh, a lot of discoloration. Like this thing right below this should be the actual color of the monitor, the original one. Whereas, uh, so. I need to get rid of this. Okay, so hopefully that was not cracking the monitor. might have to rely on a heat gun here. Uh, risking like breaking something if I don't. If I haven't already, to be honest. So let me bring up the heat gun. Okay, so I have here my heat gun. to be really careful because this can really melt plastic very easily so yeah so the trick is the trick is try to melt uh, the adhesive that is underneath here. I think it started to move. Yeah, it's moving all right. That's a good thing. Yeah. So yeah, it didn't break the, didn't break anything. So I can now just uh, eventually heat this a little bit more. Try to get rid of this. Uh, it's there is another lot, not a lot of discoloration here, which is actually a good thing. So let me just uh, heat this up a little bit more.
Yeah, it does make everything so much easier, you know, with the heat. And yeah. Yeah, it's coming off nicely. So I think actually before I uh, disassembled the whole thing, uh, I was thinking about maybe cleaning externally, but no. Uh, I had to take opportunity on the sun here. It's not going to last for a long time, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> disassemble it. So, I'm going to lay like a towel here, so that I could turn the monitor <clears throat> on top of it uh -huh. and I don't risk damaging the CRT so the first thing I'm going to remove is so just to make sure you can actually see it so there are four screws basically so two on top and there are two on the bottom here so it's fairly straightforward First thing I'm going to do is remove the base, which should be easy. There you go. So, base is very, very yellow. So, yeah, I have to do some uh, special work here. The monitor itself is not that bad in terms of yellowing. It's more the base that for some reason is much, much more yellow. Again, sorry about the noise, but I have to do this outside because of the amount of dust. Okay, so one is out. So I'm going to pause the video, you know, because of the noise and because, uh, you know, this is just like me disassembling it. When uh, I actually get the, 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 the cover off, I will turn it on again. Okay, so I have disassembled the monitor. At least the cover now is removed. It was very easy to remove it. And this is basically what we get. So it doesn't seem too hard for me to take this apart. Uh, one interesting point of this monitor is that it actually has stereo speakers here and uh, which is amazing uh, Almost none of the Apple's monitors from this era had uh, speakers other than the multimedia ones and uh, They were pr pretty ugly actually with those huge speakers on the on the side This one here actually looks like a regular monitor, but it does have the speakers inside which is great uh, so <coughs> tube Apparently, or in the electronics are part of it is made by LG. So this is not one of those Sony Trinitrons that uh, Apple used to make, which is a shame. But the quality of the image is actually very nice, even though. Uh, one point of advice here is, uh, whenever dealing with CRT monitors, always be careful with this part here. So um, CRT monitors uh, operate basically like a large capacitor and they can hold charge even after turning it off for a long period of time. So always discharge the monitors correctly. Make sure that they are discharged before working on them because they can really, really hurt. And um, they can have actually kill you. Okay, so I will have to disassemble this, I think, to clean everything up and also to get access to the front bezel here. So I get uh, to clean it up properly and also like do the um, retro brighting uh, procedure on it. So I'm going to start the disassembly here. I will turn it off because I really it really requires all my attention. And uh, that's it. So I'm actually going to film this a little bit closer so it helps me 
you know, reassembling this back together afterwards. So I know where everything should go. Always be careful when dealing with the tube here. You know, there is the knack of the tube and uh, it's very easy to damage it when you are disconnecting from the, uh, the this is actually the uh, electro beam controller, I think, something like that. So it's, uh, you have to basically, it's a socket and you have to pull it and uh, it can break the neck when you do it. So be careful with that. Uh, you have to do it very gently. And uh, just take note of all the components and uh, wires so that you know exactly how to reassemble it afterwards. So what I do is filming or taking pictures. So it makes my life easier to know where each connector goes and how to put this back together again. Okay. So <clears throat> this is going to be much more work than it was with the power Mac but of course it's doable I have done this before with other models of um, Mac monitors and uh, I don't see a big problem here so I will go for it I managed to remove the <coughs> the analog board it's not easy As you can see so this is it a lot of screws and cables and uh, so one thing that I need to do is uh, they hot glued you know the whole neck uh, of the monitor or the tube I mean like this part here see and uh, it was really hard you know to did de de uh, disattach this so I had to use the hot gun again to melt this hot glue so I was able to basically remove it so again like uh, if it's not coming off don't force it because if you break this that's it you can say bye bye to your monitor so this is off I get to actually clean this properly now and so, as for the tube, it should should just be a matter of lifting it up, I think, because I have already unscrewed all the the holding uh, elements here. So let's let's see. It's fairly heavy. So remember that you have to be careful with the the neck here. If you if you're not, like it will break. So I'm not sure if there is hot glue somewhere else here, holding this together. So yeah, maybe I have to remove this part here. So this is... Uh, this is the headphone output controller board. Uh, so it's just uh, removing it to keep it out of the way and uh, well there is nothing else here really like uh, I should be able to remove the, the tube the problem here is how to do that properly there is not much for me to hold on to okay it's coming off yeah beautiful So the tube is off and this is the frame so I can wash this now and uh, properly retrobrite it now that it's completely you know like uh, segregated from the, the other part I will probably need to I don't know if uh, it is worth it to uh, maybe remove this or if I can just leave it as it is. Maybe I should remove this door here, but I'm really afraid of uh, trying to remove this and breaking something up. So I might not do it. Okay, so it should be just... Yeah, if, if I try it, you know, like, uh, it's plastic, and again, it should be very brittle because of the age. So, chances are, if I try to remove this, uh, it will basically break, and uh, I don't want to risk it. 
So I'm going to actually do the retro bright with uh, all attached. Inside is actually the original color anyways, as you can see. So it doesn't need retro bright inside, so it's just like uh, I'm going to focus on the outside here. So yeah, that's it. I think it was fairly successful. I still have some sun out. It's not a lot, but uh, I don't know whether or not it's going to be enough. So I can start the, the work today and finish it uh, on some other sunny day, whenever that is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to start the cleaning up process now, just using the brush for now. Then I'm going to actually wash everything up and brush it uh, with, um, scrub it with, uh, you know, magic eraser and uh, some sponges and soap. Uh, I'm going to also focus on the monitor here. The monitor, there is, of course, no water involved. It's mainly like uh, washing it up, uh, sorry, uh, brushing it up and uh, using like a soft cloth of some sort to remove any marks or anything like that. But that's really about it. And uh, so let me start the, the process here and uh, I will get back to you as soon as I, I am a little bit more organized here, okay? So bear with me, talk to you later. So this is the retro brighting going on. We do have some sun now. As you can see, like the base is really, really yellow. So I'm not sure how efficient um, the retro brighting is going to be there. Uh, as for the the frame, it's not that bad. So I think um, the retro brighting is actually going to give us a very good result. Uh, just let's see what happens here. Like I'm going to leave it until the end of day. Like uh, sun is, as you can see, is actually quite nice now. So let's see how it goes. Okay. I'll get back to you as soon as I'm ready to reassemble everything. Uh, meanwhile, I have already cleaned the board. So the board is clean. As you can see, like I think I did a fairly decent job. It's not perfect, but it looks much, much better. Right? And uh, the tube as well. So you can actually see the glass now. Here, see? So yeah, it looks very nice. So yeah, let's wait and see how it goes. See you later. So I have uh, reassembled the monitor. The only thing missing now is the base and uh, I'm still like retro writing it. So it's going to take a while, but look at the results on the monitor itself. It looks like new. Look at that. It looks amazing really like very good results remember here that both like uh, that uh, support so it's gone no marks or anything like an amazing amazing work very satisfied with the results as you can see the back por portion of the the monitor is a little bit more yeah uh, it's a little bit yellowed just because i didn't petrobite it i didn't think it needed and to be honest it, it really does doesn't so the difference is very very subtle and uh it's very good the way it is so i'm really really happy with the result really happy so i'm waiting for the base to finish i'm using that method only with warm water without sun and i'm also started uh to work on the keyboard so the keyboard has been fully disassembled I have already uh, reassembled portion of it as you can see here uh, the keys are cooking and um, so basically I have the keys here ready to go here and hopefully that will be able to also retrobrite it so I'll be back when I finish that and reassemble everything hello guys so um just wanted to show you like because of the lack of sun i bought at ebay those two uh uv uh, uv light uh, mountings here so those are leds and uh not very powerful but powerful enough you know like i just mounted them into this box that i prepared with alum aluminum foil so let me just turn this off so i get to show you basically what this is so as you can see it's very small hopefully it will be powerful enough and just to show you what I've done here it's a regular you no know, cartoon box and it's uh, 
basically like uh, revested with aluminum foil just to give a little more reflexibility to the light and hopefully this will be enough to spread the UV light across all the elements that I'm going to put here so I'm going to start the test with the monitor base that is still a little bit uh, yellow not too much though um, so just to show you like um, let me get that so this is the monitor base as you can see like it has improved a lot but still like some yellow in the front of it not sure if the light uh, shows the problem but uh, yeah it's a little bit yellowed still right so actually it's a lot yellowed um, yeah the camera is not being great in capturing that but yeah it is quite yellow still the sun has made some uh, progress uh, the warm bath that I tried yesterday didn't improve much the condition here so next step is the UV chamber that I just assembled so I'm going to put some uh, peroxide here a bit of peroxide uh, cream in this area I'm going to leave it in the box for maybe I don't know like three four hours and then come back and see if that has uh, made any effect on the yellow portion here if it did then I'm going to apply the same method for everything else okay so stick with me I'll get back to you so I know I said that um, I was going to start with the base and uh, in the end I actually rather I, I preferred to start with the keyboard keys uh, in the UV chamber and this is the result so let me see if I can focus this come on focused focus yep look at that perfectly retrobrighted and uh, I left overnight so it was almost like eight hours of uh, UV bath inside of the chamber but it worked beautifully look at the space bar here again like perfectly retrobrighted I can't focus this uh, enough but uh, yeah trust me it's the original color basically no marks or strikes or anything like that like it's perfect so I'll get back to you when when I finish the other elements talk to you soon so this is how the keyboard looks like after uh, the procedure in the retrobrite chamber overnight as you can see it's the keys are very very good they basically are like in their uh, original color which is exactly what I wanted you can actually see this one here which was very yellowed and how it looks now so no yellow whatsoever so this is a success in my opinion so let's open the retrobrite chamber and uh, let's check on the uh, remainings of the keyboard there so we get uh, actually to have an idea whether or not it's time for us to uh, basically stop the process so this is the chamber and I showed you this before so I'm going to turn off the UV lights I'm going to put them away and then I'm going to open the box so let me just put that in a way that it doesn't fell I think that's good enough okay so this is the chamber so So yeah, looking it up from here, it looks really good. It looks like the chamber actually worked. So let's uh, let's check the mouse first. So this is the mouse enclosure, right? So mouse case, if you will, or however it is that you want to call it. So I'm trying to focus it here. But yeah, you can you can see that the white, the the yellow is gone, right? So I think it's fairly noticeable. So if you see from the inside, this is the original color. And if I move 
my hands here, you get to see that it's basically matching the outside as well. See? So the the extracts that you see here are basically like the peroxide cream. So that's okay. I'm going to wash this up. It's going to look as good as new. So I'm going to put this on the table here. And uh, let me pick the other stuff from the box. So I have here still like the mouse base. And again, like uh, what it seems to be a perfect result. So again, if you compare the color here. So this is the inside, which never saw sun, right? So it was the original color. And if I look and if I compare the inside with the outside and the bottom as well, like the bottom was already the original color because it never has seen sun, right? But uh, yeah, look at this. There is no contrast or anything, like it's exactly the same color. So yeah, this was a success as well. And finally, let's get the keyboard frame out of the box here. And I can just tell just by looking at it that it was also a success. So let me put it here and hopefully the light is going to help. But yeah, as you can see, it looks really, really good. Like the yellow is gone. Everything looks very original. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this up because there is a lot of uh, peroxide still uh, coating this, uh, those elements. So I have to clean this up and uh, then I'm going to put everything back together. And uh, finally, you guys are going to see everything uh, put together again. So I'm going to reassemble the, the keyboard, the mouse. I'm going to uh, put the base back to the monitor. And I'm going to put the monitor on top of the 6100. And we're going to plug everything on. And we're going to see everything working, hopefully, back again. Okay, so stick with me uh, for us to see the very end of this project, which so far looks like a good a very huge success okay so if you followed me up to now this is the moment we have been waiting for so this is the fully reassembled and refurbished power mac 6100 slash 60 look at the keyboard so look at the overall state of the machine the monitor and everything else and compare it with the previous condition so the mouse looks brand new even the cables were cleaned so I cleaned pretty much everything this is the side look at the machine it really looks brand new so the only thing that really tells off is the back here because uh, again like in the back here I didn't actually bother too much about retro writing it or even like uh, removing the, uh, the adhesive smarts or stuff like that uh, because it's in the back and I just cleaned it up and that was pretty much it but um, everything else looks impeccable so yeah this looks like a brand new machine I'm now going to uh, power it up uh, let's see if it still works of course so <clears throat> everything is already plugged in I'm now going to, actually I'm going to put the camera into the, uh, the support here so I can have my hands uh, free. So I think it's, uh, it's okay, I think. So let me power it up. So starting with the monitor. So I should start with the monitor just because, um, you know, uh, the, the video card might have uh, some trouble recognizing the monitor. It happened before when I first tried this out. So it's better to first turn on the monitor and then power on the machine. So here we go. There's the chime. It's a healthy one. Always good to hear. So let's see if we get image. So let's adjust here, maybe. Okay, so I don't get anything, don't, I'm not seeing any image.
Mm. Let's try the CD ROM. That is what was, was a perfect fit, but um, I'm not, still not seeing any image coming from the the board like it's, uh, it's not turning green here which means it's not really recognizing uh, any signal coming from the computer so let me check it out here the cables just to make sure they are properly hooked up they seem to be not sure I'm missing anything here so the monitor is plugged in everything is plugged in Okay, so let's try turning this off and on again. This is the IT crowd methodology. No, nothing. Yeah, this is basically the same thing that I saw before in the first time I tried to power this on. So apparently, it's not seeing the signal coming from the computer. So let me try to restart the computer. Okay, so it's not doing anything. Now I'm not sure if the keyboard is not working or if it, is it something else. So I have to power this off the wrong way. Never like doing that because it can damage the hard drive, but again, like I don't have any other choice here. So it doesn't look too good. Uh, it might be the keyboard might not be working as well. So it powered up. I hear the hard drive, still no image coming from the... Could it be that the power or the video card is not seated well properly? It could be that. But I don't hear, I don't hear the power. Uh, I don't hear the, the hard drive spinning or anything like that. So yeah, this is not a good thing so i think i will have to disassemble this uh you no know, remove the top here and maybe reseat the video card make sure it's in in the right place it's also not doing anything with the keyboard which tells me that it might also like have some keyboard issues here it is plugged in in the right place and I don't really see anything unusual here so let me try to so It could also be the when I reassemble the monitor, I might have left something out. Um, I think I actually plugged all the cables in the right place, but since I don't see any image or anything, that is not a good indication. But again, this happened before, right? So doesn't really tell me anything but it, it looks like it's scanning for a signal see this is like a signal scanning and it's just not finding anything so I, I don't think this is an issue with the monitor So I might have to disassemble the whole thing and put that back together. Yeah, so I will do that and then I will stop the video now. I'll do this and then come back with the result, okay? So stick with me, I'll be back. 
So what you see down here is the, uh, the keyboard main brain. And uh, so I put everything back together. Uh, it wasn't booting. So I try a lot of things and uh, it turned out to be the, uh, the SCSI ID that I set on the CD-ROM was conflicting with the hard drive. So I changed that. And then finally I got the 6100 to boot back again. But then I realized that the keyboard had some defective keys, like some keys weren't registering, um, about seven of them. It's not the end of the world, but uh, it's very annoying, especially after the amount of time that I have spent uh, retrobriting this and such. So I finally got uh, the problem isolated. So it's basically here, as you can see the trace of course, now it's much worse, but um, there was a uh, disruption in the trace here, as you can see. Uh, again, now it's worse, much worse because I had to, you know, like um, scratch it, uh, the surface to expose uh, the copper. And uh, now what I would do is I'm going to wait for a metallic pen paint that I ordered at Amazon to arrive so I can retrace this and hopefully get the conductivity back working so yeah that's where we are right now uh, as soon as that arrives I'm going to fix this and uh, hopefully get the keyboard back working and uh, and then finally the whole computer is going to be back into its form of glory so here it is uh, let me zoom out a little bit so as you can see like uh, it looks great it really does like the appearance of this machine is is really amazing like it's almost like new and uh, yeah it's a shame that the keyboard is defective like I, sh I wish I, I, I had tested that before retro biting it and uh, anyways, like worst case scenario, I can always get a new keyboard. So it's not the end of the world. But uh, yeah, let's see if I can fix that. It's always nice, you know, to try and fix stuff. So just waiting on Amazon now. And finally, I should be able to uh, get this back together. So hopefully this trace is going to be conductive again. Uh, making the, the keys that are not registering uh, to register, register again. That's it. Talk to you later. Bye.